The Knicks will look to end a two-game skid as they battle the Clippers on Saturday in the City of Angels with the team 10 games over 500 and appearing to be playoff bound. There are questions about the future of some of their role players. So it's time for some Knickerbocker basketball talk with the NBA writer and podcast host for Hoops Hype. That will be Michael Scotto who joins me now. Mike, how's it going, man? What's up, brother? Always a pleasure to join you, my man. The Knicks are... Uh... They're on a roll, man. It's good to see, and a lot of excitement and buzz outside the arena. Um, it's it's refreshing, you know. Mari yeah. Stoudemire said the Knicks were back years ago, and here we are now. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe the Knicks are officially back, and we'll see a lot of the excitement continues to build as they move towards the playoff. But Mike, let's start by talking about Josh Hart, who's been a strong fit since the Knicks traded for him at the deadline. He is a thirteen million dollar player option this summer that many expect him to decline. Do you see Hart returning to the Knicks? after this season. Yeah, Dexter, I'm among those who fully expect Josh Hart to decline that player option. It's about $13 million. Um, I certainly think he's going to get more than that on the market this summer. And to answer your question, yes, I do expect Josh Hart to be back with the New York Knicks. Uh, there are other people around the league who feel the same. And the reason for that is because Josh Hart and Tom Thibodeau have been such a, a perfect fit together. Uh, Josh Hart for the Knicks has provided a little bit of everything. Uh, he can score. He's shooting the ball from three better than he has uh, ever. And he's a perfect role player and a glue guy that people in the locker room love. He's got already prior relationships with Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson, among others. And ultimately for the Knicks, uh, his defense guarding some of the top players down the stretch has been pivotal for them. And lastly, Josh Hart, since coming over from Portland, has been a part of that closing lineup for the New York Knicks at the end of the games, which I think is the most telling sign of how much Tom Thibodeau trusts him with Jalen Brunson, Emmanuel Quickly, uh, Julius Randle, and Mitchell Robinson down the end of the games, and it's been very effective for the Knicks. Um, so depending on how the Knicks fare in the playoffs, I think we'll – determine his value ultimately uh, in free agency, but he's certainly going to get a pay raise above that $13 million player option uh, that he has, that he's going to decline for the summer, Dexter. All right, we'll see what happens with Josh Hart. Now, Emmanuel Quickly, that's another role player who's been balling, is in the conversation for the sixth man of the year this season. There was talk about the Knicks trading him earlier this season, but now his value has increased. So it's quickly part of the team's plans for the future. Yeah, Dexter, I would say so. I mean, look, Emmanuel quickly, when they were talking about the possibility of trading him earlier in the year, it was when his value was lower. And if anything, at that time, they would have sold high and he would have been uh, moved potentially for a first round pick. But teams didn't want to give that up at the time early in the season before he really took off uh, when R.J. Barrett got hurt and he vaulted into the starting lineup. Uh, I would say now for the Knicks looking ahead towards the summer, uh, Obviously, retaining Josh Hart and having extension conversations with Emmanuel Quickly are going to be two of the top priorities for the team looking ahead. And for Quickly, I mean, kudos to him. He's put himself in, in a position to have those conversations. I think, Dexter, uh, with that said, the Knicks are always certainly in the market for stars out there. And if a star became available, similar to when Donovan Mitchell was available, other teams uh, are going to want Emmanuel quickly from the Knicks. So depending on the star, uh, if the Knicks go for one, that could, in my opinion, be the only deterrent to him coming back because other teams are going to want him. But uh, those extension talks are going to be interesting because he's he's played himself into a lot of money potentially. And, and as you touched on, Dexter, uh, the six man of the year conversation, I think, is going to come down to – uh, to Emmanuel quickly. You've got Bobby Portis, who's a double-double machine, Malcolm Brogdon, and I think also Norman Powell with the Los Angeles Clippers is going to garner some votes as well. So it'll be a thrilling race at the end of the year, but no doubt quickly has been instrumental to New York's success in this recent run. Yeah, he absolutely has been really impressive as a two-way player for the Knicks. And speaking of the team, they've had some impressive winning streaks this season, Mike. Their nine-game winning streak ended earlier this week, and there's been a lot of talk about whether or not the Knicks are for real. So I got to ask you this. How good do you think this New York team is right now? Well, Dexter, I think when you look ahead towards the playoffs, no team in the in the Eastern Conference is necessarily looking forward to playing the Knicks because 
They grind it out defensively. You know that they're going to play hard and they're going to give you a full 48 minutes each game. Um, certainly the impact of Josh Hart has, has taken this team to another level and they seem more balanced as long as they stay healthy. Um, for the Knicks, I think it's how far they can go is going to be a little bit matchup dependent. Uh, I think it would be certainly thrilling and ironic if uh, they could face the Cleveland Cavaliers in the first round and go up against Donovan Mitchell, who they tried to trade for over the summer. I think that would be a, a thrilling series that could go the distance. And right now in the East, things are a little bit more competitive than some thought with the Brooklyn Nets uh, across town faring I think a little bit better recently than people thought after they traded Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Mikhail Bridges has been uh, exceptional for them, and so is Cam Johnson, who's also going to get a big pay raise. Um, so for the Knicks, I think certainly, you know, you look at them as a potential team that could maybe win a round, uh, depending on the matchup, and then you take it from there. Um, but I think right now for the Knicks, uh, this is all a positive step in the right direction, and uh, whoever they face in the first round, it's going to be a, a thrilling matchup. And it, it's, it's wonderful to see for the Knicks to start to get back. Uh, it'll be two playoff trips in three years. Yeah, that'll be huge for Knicks fans. I know I personally want to see them play the Cavs in that first round matchup. That would be absolutely fantastic and a bit ironic. Like you said, that is Michael Scotto, NBA writer for Hoops Hype, also podcast host for Hoops Hype. Mike, always good to talk some basketball with you. Thank you for your time and your insight on the Knicks. We'll talk soon. My pleasure, Dexter. Thank you, brother.